You know what I mean? I knock your head off, you know. It wasn't long before my crew and I witnessed some of that antisocial behaviour. I was visiting a block of flats offering temporary accommodation where I'd heard that every resident was from the south of England. Hello. Hello, mate. How are I you? found people were prepared to talk to me, but not always on camera. Who's this for stars? This, this is Bobby. This is my emotional support dog. Hello, Bobby. He helps keep me stable, basically. And what council sent you here? Medway Council gave me two options. They could house me in Medway without Bobby mm -hmm. or to relocate to here. And I turned around and said, well, you're taking my dog away from me, you, you're taking my life away from me, basically. He's the one that's kept me alive. Hello. Hello. What council sent you here? Uh, Barnard Council. Do you like living here? No. <laughs> Why? This uh, home I don't like because have a lot of noise for baby and a lot of drugs. Mm. And I don't like it. You know I me, mean? I knock your head off, you know. It wasn't long before my crew and I witnessed some of that antisocial behaviour. Before I left, I was invited into the flat of Austin Kelly from Barnet in North London, who was missing home terribly. What made you come here? It's the base, the only option I was given. How good's that for you? It's lonely. If you've lived in a place for so many years, you, you, you're a known face. Mm. And up here, it's an open prison with no friends. Why do you think so many people from, well, from southern England are being, are being sent up north? The whole incentive is to just get rid of the undesirables. Uh, you know, those either they're out of work, uh, they have an addiction, a problem, a mental health problem, so they send them somewhere else. They're not a problem for that council that area any longer. They wash their hands of us. That's what they've done, basically. Do you seriously think that they are making a decision to remove certain undesirables yes. from their council? Yeah. yeah. Before you even finish the question, yeah. Absolutely. Some people might call that social cleansing. Oh, I agree with that. You know, to be moved 200 miles away um, from whatever support network existed for you, it's going to be incredibly tough. Um, you're surrounded by other vulnerable people with complex issues. Um, and financially, you have no means of getting back to where you've come from. So. You can imagine coming through that door, ending up here, looking at that wall and going, you know, life, the life that I had, whatever that was, has now ended. We approached the councils mentioned by the tenants I spoke to in Bradford. Barnet Council said the vast majority of people have found homes in Barnet, but a small number of residents are housed outside. It always considers personal circumstances and ensures residents are supported. Medway Council said it secures temporary accommodation for homeless households to ensure they have somewhere to stay and supports them during this time. Clearly, many of the people I've met feel that they are being discarded, but... A council can only meet the needs of the people that live within its boundaries if it knows how many people are living there. And it would appear the Bradford City Council only know about some of the people who are being sent here. This situation is not unique to Bradford. Despite one local authority having a legal duty to inform another when it is moving residents there, many are not doing so. 
We found at least 60 councils where it appears they have failed to notify the receiving local authority about relocating their residents. Some have admitted this to us, including Craven District Council in North Yorkshire. Crawley in West Sussex and Broxbourne in Hertfordshire. But what impact does failure to notify have on the receiving borough? To find out, I was going to Basildon to meet leader of the council, Gavin Callahan. Gavin, can you tell me how many people have been relocated to Basildon? The honest answer is no. 58% of the time, we haven't been notified when people have been moved into the borough from London boroughs. More than half the time, you're not notified that people are being placed here. That's correct. And what normally happens is we find out when we start to see people appearing at our services. So we've seen a big impact on things like domestic violence services and on our schools. In the last four years, over 700 children come into the borough through the displacement from London Borough scheme. That's put a huge, huge pressure on school places, on GP practices and on the hospital. So London boroughs are placing their homeless families here. Where are the homeless families in Basildon being placed? In Basildon, we have seen some of our residents leave the borough. They've gone as far as Durham and Nottingham. Moving people from London borough to here and then moving people who are established here to the north of the country, wherever it may be, is playing checkers with people's lives, isn't it? Absolutely. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't condone it, I wouldn't defend it. But the reality is, this is a national emergency on housing, and the public expect councils to be able to talk to one another about who is moving between their borough boundaries. That's what we want to see happen in the short term, that at least we understand who is here. Longer term, this whole policy needs to go.